It wasn't long after Abdul Rahman ibn Auf's acceptance of Islam that his portion of torture would catch up with him. It was so intense that he was forced to leave his home city of Mecca as were many other companions in search of a place where they could worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala freely and that place turned out to be Abyssinia. Now, not long after this, the Prophet Muhammad migrated to the city of Medina and so Abdul Rahman left Abyssinia and took part in the second migration from Abyssinia to Medina to be with the Prophet Now, this is where it gets interesting. Because when he arrived at Medina, he was penniless. He was completely dependent upon others financially. Now, he was not going to allow this situation to persist. No way. And so the very first moment that his feet touched the Medinan soil, he didn't rest until he found what he was looking for. He was looking for financial freedom. I'm not relying upon anyone but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Abdul Rahman ibn Auf knew very well the hadith of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam who said no one can eat any food better than that which one's own hands have earned and the Prophet of Allah Dawood David used to eat through what his own hands have earned listen to this young brothers who claim that life's opportunities only somehow favor the rich favor the privileged favored the well-educated, favored the drug dealer, favored the YouTuber, the influencer. No, you listen to this. Anas ibn Malik, he said, Abdul Rahman ibn Auf arrived at Medina and the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam paired him with Sa'd ibn Rabia. He said he had so much money. He was a rich man. You see, it was the Prophet's practice to pair a Meccan migrant with a local Medinan Muslim, a resident of Medina. So the host in Medina would share almost everything with his Meccan brother. This was a prophetic strategy put in place to ensure the well-being of those immigrants who'd left everything in Mecca to be with the Muslims in Medina. So Abdul Rahman ibn Auf was paired with this Sahabi called Sa'ad ibn Rabi'ah, a rich Medinan native. Now listen to their very first conversation, La ilaha illallah, profound. Sa'ad ibn Rabi'ah says to his brother Abdul Rahman, the Ansar, meaning the Muslim residents of Medina, the helpers. They know very well that I am one of the richest men amongst them and I'm going to split my wealth in half between you and I. And then he says, and I have two wives. So you look at them both and tell me which one is more pleasing to your eye and I will divorce her. And when her waiting period is over, you can propose to her. Now, astonishing is this bewildering. I mean, what term does a person use to describe the scene? But you see, this was nothing more than a reflection of Sa'ad ibn Rabi'ah's eagerness to fulfill the Prophet sallallahu instruction to provide comfort and support to their immigrant companions. So some of them took it to these levels. It's unbelievable. But to me, Abdul Rahman's response was even more remarkable than the offer. What did Abdul Rahman ibn Auf say in response to this? He said, May Allah bless you, your wives, your family. Duluni ala suq. Please direct me to the marketplace. So they gave him directions to the marketplace. It was the marketplace of the Jewish tribe of Banu Qaynuqa, and he began to buy and sell with what little he had. Not long after this, the Prophet ﷺ bumped into Abdul Rahman and he saw a yellow scented powder which was used by the women of Medina as a sort of adornment, as a makeup. But he saw it on the face of Abdul Rahman. So the Prophet ﷺ said to him, What is this, O oh, Abdul Rahman? And he said, Ya Rasulullah, min al Ansar. I married a woman from the Ansar. So the Prophet asked him, What did you give her as dowry? He said, The weight of a date stone in gold. Allahu Akbar. So in this short time, Abdul Rahman was now in a position to be giving gold as dowry. It was only moments before this when he'd arrived at Medina completely penniless, as broke as they come. Allahu Akbar. And so the Prophet wasallam said to him, prepare a wedding feast, even if it is with just one sheep. Now, I can't allow this to pass without a reflection. 
The statement of Abdul Rahman ibn Auf when he said, direct me to the marketplace. This statement embodies values that our ummah has lacked for decades. Values of hard work, values pertaining to a yearning to sweat in pursuit of self-reliance, values that we desperately need to rekindle within our hearts if we hope to see our ummah standing again on its two feet, leading the nations of the world as it did once before, as Allah has intended for it. Dulluni ala suq, direct me to the marketplace. It's a statement which illustrates a love for vision setting and working towards goals, a love of leading a life of activity where this individual is busying himself all of the times with something beneficial, oscillating between a worldly pursuit and a religious pursuit, investing in every God-given second and breath in something productive and worthwhile. Dulluni ala suq, direct me to the marketplace, is a statement that contests the sluggish attitude of so many who only accept work if it fits in with their preference or their standard or their profession or their background. No, no, if it's halal, pounce at the opportunity to earn an independent living until Allah sends you the ideal job you desire or the work that you had in mind for yourself. Dulluni ala suq, direct me to the marketplace, is a statement that rebukes those who wished that they could receive a generous offer, like the offer that Sa'ad gave to Abdul Rahman. It rebukes them and it says to them, is it not that the upper giving hand is better in Allah's sight than the lower receiving hand? Direct me to the marketplace is a statement that doesn't condemn the jobless. It condemns the lazy ones, the complacent ones, the lethargic ones, the boys who sit in the bodies of men. They're boys at heart. They lack the drive to toil, to graft, to grind. They prefer to stay at home, playing games, maybe making dua for employment, but they won't actively pursue it. Direct me to the marketplace challenges these idiotic get-rich-quick schemes and instead drives you in the direction of proper work, of real work, by saying to you, don't you realize that hard work in search of halal earnings is an act of worship? Put aside these stupid pyramid schemes and look for real work. How beautiful were the words of Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu who said, none of you should sit at home without work and saying, oh Allah, please provide for me because you know very well that the sky does not rain gold or silver. Remember reading the story of Shaqiq al-Balqi, one of our righteous predecessors, and it stuck with me. Shaqiq bade farewell to his teacher Ibrahim ibn Adham before then embarking on a business trip. During his travel, he saw a blind bird with a broken wing, and he paused for a moment, and he stared at this disabled bird. And he was thinking to himself, I wonder who provides for this bird in this desolate land. Soon after, another bird arrived at the scene and dropped food within the beak of the blind bird. So Shaqiq was moved by this episode. He thought to himself, if Allah provides for this bird without any effort from it, then why should I tire myself with this business trip? I'm going to return home and Allah will provide for me as well. So he came back and his teacher Ibrahim ibn Adham said to him, why, why do you come back? Shaqiq said to him, this is what I saw and this is what happened. Ibrahim ibn Adham was unhappy with this response. And he said to him, why do you accept for yourself to be like the blind and disabled bird, dependent upon the provisions of others? Why do you not like to be like the other bird that works and toils to then be of benefit to those around it? So he heard these words and Shaqiq took the hand of his teacher Ibrahim and he kissed it. And Shaqiq, he packed his bags and he continued on his business trip once again. I ask how many fathers have fallen into debt because of their endeavors to meet the never-ending financial requests of their sons who will simply refuse to grow up and start working and providing and acting like men. Is it not time to give dad a rest and become a, a means for his comfort once and for all? Is it not time to give him some peace? Is it not time to ask your father or any other experienced individual, Dulluni ala suq, where is the marketplace? Is it not that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had said, هُوَ الَّذِي جَعَلَ لَكُمُ الْأَرْضَ ذَلُولَا فَامْشُوا فِي مَنَاكِبِهَا وَكُلُوا مِنْ رِزْقِهِ وَإِلَيْهِ النُّشُورِ It is He, Allah, who made the earth tame for you. So walk along its slopes and eat of His provisions. Look at how Allah draws together these things, how He draws together walk along its slopes, and then the consequential wage, eat of His provisions. In other words, your earning will be a fruit of your labor, a fruit of your effort, and trust in Allah's promise for provision for rizq. 
Work will come, but only after struggle and pursuit. As a Muslim, you are to see yourself as a leader. And a leader will accept nothing but to be the upper giving hand, the giver of loans, the, the giver of charity, the funder of Islamic projects, the savior of orphans, the financer of the Muslim cause. So rise from your slumber. Brother, don't waste another second of your life and repeat the words of Abdul Rahman ibn Auf with strength and courage once and for all. Dulluni ala suq, direct me to the marketplace.